My ex-wife cheated on me with five guys. Apparently, she had a thing for younger guys. My ex works as a nurse at a local hospital in our city. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go over a story titled Armageddon Day, story number one. And guys, this story is actually a spin-off, for lack of a better term, of the very popular video series about the uh, Special Forces squad that goes full Armageddon on their wives after they discover they were cheating. If you guys remember, because I know a lot of you guys watched this series, which was very popular, that was about the group of guys that found out that all their wives, all their wives, were cheating on them while they were deployed or away on training or whatever. And the one guy who is the narrator of those whole of the whole series, he he's like these guys are like the A team. I kid you not, they're like the A team. And the dude that told the story was like Hannibal. He was the leader, and they found out that the wives were cheating. Formed a plan how every single one of them, when they calmed down, took them all out. Kid you not. And you guys that saw the show remember that. And it's an ongoing series which I suggest you guys you keep watching or watch. You haven't seen it yet. Anyhow, the guy mentioned that uh, he has. Um, other members of the crew that were thinking about sharing their story. And I've been exchanging uh, emails with him, very cool guy, and he let me know that his buddy shared his take on his whole thing as well. And this is what we got here. One of the guys in the crew sharing about what happened when he discovered his wife was cheating with the, the crew, and what he did to find out who she was cheating with, track down the guy, the whole plan of action to strike, and let me tell you, it is really good. And it, it, although this is obviously entertaining stories, it is really a shame. These are guys that are putting their lives in harm's way, and these wives do this to these guys. It's despicable. But fortunately, these guys definitely have the last laugh, and I know from the other dude's story, they're moving on, which is awesome. So, starts off, he says, uh, hello everyone. This is the first time I'm writing something like this, and before now, I had no idea there were so many cheating stories on the internet. Honestly, when we started researching the cheating spouses and what to do to explore our options, I discovered there was so much data online that we could use. My friend and teammate showed us his post after our Armageddon Day and told us about the massive support he received from internet strangers. He said it's like therapy unlike any other and it helps focus your mind towards what we suffered, felt, and what you want in the future. He told us to write about our experiences and what we went through, and instead of creating multiple Reddit accounts, he shared his account with the rest of us so he can write all what we went through and want me to say. Me and my ex had no children by choice. So again, he was part of the crew. And yeah, the guy that wrote the other stories made it clear that it really helped. Because there were guys showing so much support online through Reddit that found the story. And then, of course, the stories I did, a whole different group of guys that really enjoyed these series, been really encouraging that guy and the rest of the crew on. So now you guys can encourage this guy in his uh, moving past all this. He says, so I will write about the Armageddon Day, the way I confronted my ex-wife. He says, my ex-wife cheated on me with five guys. Apparently, she had a thing for younger dudes. My ex works as a nurse at a local hospital in our city. Well, there's a freaking stereotype of a cheater on wheels, a nurse. And she would find guys who were single. She would seduce them and feed them some crap and start her affairs with them, often at their homes, and would play the role of a single woman, maybe even a widow, when whenever I was away at deployment. Oh my god, she was actually saying her husband was dead? So, my approach to confrontation was kind of different. I managed to track her down and track down her current affair partner. He is 27 years old, college student, single, working as an HVAC tech, studying in a master's program. Apparently, he met my ex when he was doing maintenance at the hospital. My ex is 32. So, after confirming this guy is her current affair partner, I started doing research on him. He is a good guy innocent, from a decent family, and was completely unaware that she was married. You know, a lot of guys would say, I don't care. But at least this guy realized, found out through his research, because this guy did some serious recon on this dude, as well as all the guys in this group did serious recon on everything before they struck. I mean, these guys, it was something else. A lot of guys wouldn't care, but at least he's realizing this guy didn't know and handles it in a fair manner. Because remember... 
There are guys out there that have affairs with women or are dating women and have no idea they have a boyfriend or husband. And so those guys are hurt too because they thought that the girl was the girlfriend, but she was married. He says he thought he landed a decent girlfriend. I didn't want to destroy the guy's future because he didn't know. So one day I decided to meet him. I approached him a few days before Armageddon Day. At first he thought I was mistaken and confused. Then I showed him the pictures of my ex-wife and me. The pure shock on his face told me everything I needed to know about this guy. He was appalled and angry and scared of me at the same time. I bet he was scared. This is a special forces guy. This We all know what this dude does for a living or has to do when it comes down to it. I told him I wanted to find out if he knew about her and what kind of lies she told him directly from him. And I confronted him first so I wouldn't have to sue him. He then told me everything about the dates he took her on, gifts he bought her, the whole story. He then told me he is done with her and he won't ever see her again, and asked me what my plans were, so I told him. So after I returned home, I told my ex-wife that I will be leaving on a trip for two days with the guys, and as planned, the boy, the boy toy chatted her up, acting like he doesn't know anything, and asked her to spend the night at his place. He told her that he will come home at 9 p.m., and as predicted, my ex-wife immediately agreed to go to his place. So the second this guy goes away, probably what she thought was a training exercise or something, boom, off with her boy toy. That was sickening. So for two days before Armageddon Day, me and the boy toy prepared an ambush and we plastered the bedroom at his place with pictures of her affairs with him and her previous boy toys collected from her laptop and cell phones, as well as all the footage from the security system at my place. On Armageddon Day, I left home about 8 a.m. and went straight to the bank to transfer all the funds from my personal accounts to a new bank account that I opened a week earlier because she knew about the previous account details and moved 50% from all our accounts we shared and then went by to the boy toy's place, hid my car, and waited at 8.30 p.m. confirming that my ex has met up with the boy toy. I disconnected her cell phone from my plan. And I had called her parents, telling them everything and what is about to happen. They were sad, shocked, and angry at her. I also told them at 9 p.m. sharp, a friend of mine will arrive at their place with a box full of evidence. At 9.10, my ex-wife arrived with her boy toy, and as she entered his house, she tried making out with him. But he pushed her away. This confused her. He then dragged her in the bedroom and turned on the lights where I was sitting on the bed with bloodshot eyes. Can you imagine seeing that whole scene? He, she comes in the house with the boy toy, making out the whole thing, lays her to the bedroom, and lo and behold, there's her husband right there. Holy crap. So yeah, as you can imagine, her expression as she had and had a complete breakdown. She looked at the pictures and text plastered on the walls. I was silent, and the boy toy began first and told her she is disgusting, and he is done with her and never wants to see her again. Good for him. And remember, this guy also thought this was his girlfriend. So two guys are being betrayed. Well, actually, let me step back. Not just these two, but also her other boy toys are being betrayed too. I mean, she is just a heartless sociopath. All these gals are. Then I walked up to her and handed her the divorce papers. And as predicted, she started her excuses. Lying, gaslighting, and bullshitting. But I had the whole script that already written down. I took out the papers and started reading all the pre-prepared replies to everything. Seeing that, she started seeing, seeing that, she started screaming. When she started, I lowered my voice and told her to shut up. That silenced her quickly. I'm sure it did. Here we go with the sirens again. Whenever I do videos, the sirens have to come here. That, although sad this whole thing had to happen, is one hell of a plan. I mean, her walking in and seeing all that, good lord. And this guy, he handled this like a boss, just like the other guy wrote the story and all the other dudes. I told her she's no longer welcome at my house and to go live with her parents. They live in the same city, so they are not that far away. She said, I can't just kick her out. I replied, if she tries to return to my home, all this evidence is going to her hospital next, and all her previous boyfriends that are working there will also be screwed with her. She just started crying after that. Of course she did. If all else fails, it's the waterworks every freaking time. Her current boy toy then said if, he, if, that, uh, said if I want, he's willing to testify against her in court. I thanked him. Good job on this guy. 
She knew she was screwed because not only was this at uh, at this is a at fault at fault state, that she also had to sign a prenup with a clause of adultery for peace of mind, as she said. You live in an at fault state, and she actually wanted you to sign a prenup prior to getting married. I mean, good lord, and she did all this. That was probably to make you think there was no way that she'd cheat on you, and probably figured, well, you know what? Even if it's a no fault state and it's a prenup, she probably figured I'll still, because I'm a woman in 2022 in America, I can still find a way to uh, weasel my way through the prenup. Well, obviously not. Well, since then, she's tried all kinds of drama, but I have remained strictly no contact with her. Good bro, you have no reason to talk to her. The only communication should go on is between your attorney and her attorney. That's it. Don't let her in. All of her offers for marriage counseling and stuff have been ignored. And every friend she tried to rope in with her narrative has been informed of the truth with appropriate evidence. Her family almost disowned her because they are so disgusted by her actions and have literally crucified her. Literally? She still continues the drama and even tried to stalk me until my lawyer contacted her and told her if she doesn't stop, I will get a restraining order against her. You could easily do that. Make things more difficult and nobody would blame you. Well, that's my story. I know I will never trust her again. As my buddy said, loyalty is the most important aspect of any relationship. You're darn right it is. And the sad thing is that that has become less and less nowadays. That that is the world we're in right now. And again, you can't be an empowered woman in 2022 unless you're doing these types of awful things. Now, does this mean that every woman walking the earth does this to their boyfriends or husbands or fiancés? No. But sadly, a hell of a lot do. And there is a stereotype about military wives. I've done countless stories on my other channel about this. Not, not just both stories and personal stories that guys wrote in about. And it's always the same deal. These guys, they, get, they, they, they go in the military. They get married relatively young. And uh, they, they're deployed. And the second they're gone, boom. The cheating starts. And I got, when I do these videos, I get thousands and thousands of dudes all over the country backing this up. So it's best to, if you're going to get me in the military, wait until you're out, you're out to get married. Even then, in 2022, be very careful. Or if not, don't do it at all. Now, real quick, I got some comments here. One guy says, hey, it's baffling to me that your ex has some sort of belief that her infidelity could be forgiven. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. Couldn't have been easy. Just find a way to continue healing for, with your brothers. I'm curious about the script you guys created as well as her subsequent drama. How was she crucified? Anyways, thanks for sharing your story and for your service. All the best. And the guy who wrote the story wrote back saying, uh, The script we prepared is a book of about 100 pages with index and chapters for all possible BS that we could think of. That's what the dude in the other story said. There's a chapter for blame shifting, lying, gaslighting, bargaining, blame spreading, calming loneliness, offering open relationships, and all possible BS. We'll probably uh, share it after our divorce is finalized. You guys should publish this book. He says 100 pages long about all the BS that could be said to you to try to get the guy to change his mind. You, you guys should write this thing out and publish it because there are dudes that would buy this. I shit you not. And you can make a deal with me and I'll promote it on my channel. Another guy says, your ex doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't, your ex doesn't deserve any sympathy since she cheated and lied about being a widow, which is messed up. Glad that she had signed the prenup and agreed on infidelity clause as well as living in a false state. Seriously, does she think she can cover a fare from her ex who is special forces? That's what I thought. And the last one, this guy says, if she wanted to be single so bad, divorce was the obvious answer. Why lie, lie and cheat and sneak around playing with others' emotions and lives? Because she's a sociopath and no doubt a narcissist. This was all so unnecessary and dishonest. Sorry she did this to all you guys. You will need to heal and learn to love again. Good luck. Well, I don't know about the whole loving again thing. Maybe maybe a woman wrote that. But anyhow, bro, I don't know if you'll ever see this. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But uh, thank you for the story and awesome job. Just like your bro over there, you handle this like a boss. And I wish you all the best. And like I said to the other dude, take it one day at a time. It's all you can do. But uh, she said she's 32. I'm going to guess you're probably in your 30s as well. You got your whole life ahead of you. Seriously. You know, I'm 45 pretty soon and... To me, you're you're young, so you got your whole life ahead of you. One day by day, focus on the job, focus on uh, hanging out with your bros, family, keep yourself in good shape, and it will get better with time. End of story. And uh, if 
It's a big if you go down the relationship path down the road. You certainly learned a hell of a lot of the modern gals these days. Be very, very careful. So I wish you all the best. And if you got any updates, definitely share them. We'd love to hear it. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. This guy know what you think about this. Give him some support. He can definitely use it. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.